Hi, we're going into the review of 2014 right away. This is the chart I did for the past year that shows you the major aspects that occurred. It was uh, a very dramatic year and we were anticipating that because this is the culmination of a five-year aspect between Pluto and Uranus and it became very exact toward the end of the year and so we were anticipating major changes that would occur and major events. The themes that started five years ago have continued on and they were coming to climaxes this year since we had um, so many events piling on and so this is uh, a review of the prior, prior year. I'll show you next the um, chart for the S&P 500 because I overlay the major events that I predict on 2014 onto the actual S&P 500 chart for the year so that anyone who's interested in financial can see the um, accuracy or the inaccuracy of these um, astrological um, predictions that we're doing. So let's stop for a second and we'll go over and look at the S&P 500 chart. So here we actually have the S&P 500 that I pulled exactly at the end of the year and I've overlaid uh, the major astrological events against the stock market to see if they match or they don't match. What I really noticed this year is how the uh, Sun-Saturn aspects uh, predicted dips in the market. The eclipse periods, you never know for sure because the most dramatic eclipse period was in April um, where we had major events with Putin and uh, Crimea and ISIS but it didn't seem to cre create the big dips in the stock market that I had anticipated but if you look over in the October time frame then we had major dips and that's when we started having major changes in the oil prices and then we had more volatility at the end of the year and most of that is all because of that Pluto square Uranus aspects that are coming into um, high profile because they're so exact and they're at the end of their paths so things that have been building for three years the five years are coming um, into fruition or into um, exaggerated events occurring uh, toward the end of the year. We see it in the market, but the market has been unbelievably resilient because of the Fed propping up the market and computerized trading. It really hasn't been a market that reflects the economy at all. So let's go look at uh, the actual events through uh, the year to see where the drama was. So we had the Winter Olympics in January, but right after it was uh, Putin that invaded Crimea. And remember, this is a strategy about oil and trying to control his economy and keep the Eastern Bloc intact. And it's a battle against NATO, which was a direct impulse, um, impact with Merkel, Angela Merkel, because she is basically ahead of the biggest economy in Europe and yet she was in total conflict because so much of the German economy does business with Russia that it put her between Obama and Putin in this event and then right into the middle of April the major event that I had talked about with the eclipse ISIS comes on board and starts attacking in Syria and in Iraq and the U.S. and European nations get involved during this entire period of the eclipse in April. And then we go on. One of the major themes this year has been Saturn and Scorpio, and we have seen an increase of violence with women. This has gone on for about two and a half years, and so we have seen the end of the Pistorius trial. We saw the... Um, a culmination of the women that were captured in in Africa 
And then at the end of the year, we have the scandal, the sex scandal with Bill Cosby. But this has been a two and a half year event and it's coming to the end. And what we're seeing now is that uh, Saturn, the ruler of um, laws and regulations, has moved into Sagittarius. And what's going to happen with that is that we will wind up seeing laws and major social changes that will occur because of Saturn going into Sagittarius where we may see some legal action finally take place regarding violence against women. I'm into the major theme of the year which is that all the protests, all of the um, irritation that started with the 99 percent is coming back with um, the events of racial bias against people and the militarization of the police. We saw this in Ferguson this summer, but it didn't just stop there. It went all the way across um, across the United States and across um, all the major cities, even to the point that the staffers in Congress um, did a walkout one afternoon. And then it spread all the way into Hong Kong because they're fighting the um, government trying to control their their political process and that went on for months and months and months um, and we saw this across the world in various protests and then we had the issue of Ebola spreading across the world panicking uh, the US and the rest of Europe that we were going to wind up seeing it spread into our countries too it was in the last four months, five months of the year, that the Uranus-Pluto aspect became um, exact. And then we started seeing even more protests um, that we had another major um, death in New York City that evoked again more protests because they had killed a man over a 75 cent cigarette and they piled on him and he died of asphyxiation and again we had more protests going to the streets so this has been a theme throughout the year we're not quite done with that this is going to extend into 2015 for the first quarter and we will see that also the events with Putin have come uh, to another head that we have been screwing down the economic I think that we are seeing an organized uh, event here of dropping oil prices to squeeze Putin and other countries that uh, are highly de economically dependent upon oil prices. And we are going to um, see some major events in this first quarter of 2015 as these oil prices that have been dropping have major impacts on world economies. Here's a chart where you can see uh, the impact of oil and needed oil prices that are required by various countries in the world. So we are going to see um, some major events in the first quarter of 2015 because of these drop in oil prices. Let's go on and look at 2015 now.